the people that's defending Brendan's decision to cancel his shows at San Francisco because of low ticket sales is, of course, none other than Sam Tripoli. And it seems like he's gone full redact when it comes to trying to explain why Brendan can't sell any tickets by suggesting that it's some sort of, as you can see here for the title, spiritual problem. Now, my man's brain is clearly broken because he probably, you know, drank too many Dr. Peppers when he was younger and stuff. And, you know, has been spending way too much time reading books, um, you know, that are written backwards and upside down and covered in foil. But regardless, if there was one explanation that I could have never predicted in terms of how to explain why Brendan can't sell tickets in San Francisco, nothing would have ever come close to describing it as a spiritual problem, ever. I wouldn't have come close to describing that at all. And I actually want you guys, as you're watching this clip, Curse of the Fire and the Kids subreddit, to watch as Sam Tripoli tries to, you know, coherently ramble through his points and to make sure you understand why he thinks it's a spiritual problem and why you don't get it and why it's deeper than rap and blah, blah, blah. But whilst you're listening to him speak, please also focus on his co-hosts, who all seem to be pretty normal-looking you know, um, decent people who are maybe not as far down deep into the rabbit hole, wherever he's in, right? And it's always funny too when you hear someone ranting the way Sam does and the background that he's in is pretty bright. So it's a pretty normal, clear day, middle of the day, having a great time and he's able to just turn it on to this sort of level. You're like, Jesus, man, imagine what you're like during a downtime. Anyway, just focus on his co-host as Sam Trippy tries to explain why Brendan Shaw doesn't sell tickets in San Francisco. Stop just freaking recession porn on the internet on twitter on everything to the point that i think people don't want to spend the money which is going to just accelerate with everything that's going on i'm just telling i mean i i have no yeah. answers here but this is all manifestation they want the economy to crash so everybody's in i have no answers here but this is all just manifestation you can't you can't make any there, there hasn't been a better line said in a long, long time in it. I have no answers, but let me tell you the answers that I know. Pain, and I, you know, I know how he doesn't want to hear that, or maybe other people that don't buy into conspiracies, but this is all spiritual, and they're just pushing this narrative so everyone gets into scarcity. Nobody spends any money. Nobody's going to... You do, you see people, like, they're canceling gigs on the road because no one's buying tickets, and it's not just big names. It's like... People trying to do their own gigs. Comedy clubs are like, dude, our numbers are just been bad. Yeah, because people are watching the internet and watching the news and they're just hearing about the end is near and everybody's saving their money, which is accelerating this crash. But I'm going to tell you something. Or people are realizing that most of these people aren't worth the money that they're basically trying to extract from punters. Just imagine what a ticket to see Sam Tripoli is going to fetch you on a weekend. Just imagine. Imagine how much it's going to fetch you to see him on a weekend. $20, $15, $30, not including your gas, not including your parking, what you're going to eat that night, what you're going to drink, are you going to pick something up? It's a lot of money to go see Sam Tripoli basically rant the same way he does on podcasts on stage. Is that really worth the money? In the post-pandemic world, you just gave given birth to a kid. You just got a new dog. You bought a new car. You got a new bike. You started a new job. Do you really? Can you really justify traveling anywhere to go see Sam Tripoli perform and do comedy? Probably not. So maybe the pandemic has awoken people in terms of common sense, in terms of um, um, prioritizing what actually matters, in terms of cutting the fat and be like, you know what? I'm not going to listen to these people who will be on stage. They're shit. They're not funny. They're not worth the money. They're not worth the time. They're not worth the effort. So I'm just not going to go. But the things that I do want to go to, I'm going to make sure I go to them. I'm a good example of it. I'm still going to festivals. I'm still going to gigs. I'm still going to live shows. I'm still traveling. It may not be as to far flung places as I did before, but I'm still going to places I want to go to because I want to go to them. But the stuff that I don't want to go to anymore, I'm trimming the fat and I'm leaving them behind. But this idea that somehow spirituality comes into it is absolutely insane. Especially when it comes to Brendan Shaw. It's like, you're not talking about people who are like 
at the top of their flipping class in what they do. You're talking essentially about people who are just doing it in order to keep the lights on. Of course, it's a, you know, it's a bit crass to say it, but essentially, you know, they're not moving the needle. No one's going to look back at what they do and think, oh my God, what Sam Tripoli said about this, this was really illuminating and really kind of, you know, mood things in culture. No, you're just doing it to keep the lights on. No one's really going to remember or care about you when you're gone. It just is what it is, isn't it? We all have, we all have our part to play in life. So if that's the case, and you're in a post-pandemic world and people are being, you know, being reminded that they have a short time on this planet that we call Earth, why would you waste it going to see these people perform? Just think about it. Why would you do that? Unless you're a fan, which is also a good thing because now I would imagine as bad as it is for them to sell tickets, it's also a good time because now you know who your fans are. The people who are coming out to see you perform, they really fuck with you. They really, really like you. They really love you to some extent. The fact that they'd leave their homes to come and see you, of all people, perform means that they really, really love and appreciate you. So what do you owe them? A good show. You owe them to put the whiskey down. You owe them to put down the lines and save it for at least for the end of the show. You owe them to put down the joint. Do you know what I mean? To maybe not eat a full meal before you go on stage, whatever it is, and give them a good show. Because they made the effort to fucking see you. Because they could be doing many, many other things. But they came to see you perform. But this idea that it's spiritual is just wild. And also, what's with these conspiracy theories people going into the realm of spirituality anyway? If you're going to be a conspiracy theorist nut, be a conspiracy theorist nut. Double down. Let's talk about some real crazy shit. Don't suddenly start hiding behind God and spirituality and devils and demons and shit. Like, fuck off. Let's let's be real. Let's let's go down the real route. Let's be atheist. Let's actually try to explain everything away without having to, you know, as, ascribe to God and devils and demons and shit. Come on, let's really go for it. This whole being like fucking um this whole being a conspiracist, a conspiracy theorist trad person is really bizarre, I think so very very strange it's a battle between good and evil oh yeah so you happen to be the good knight how certain are you you're uh, you're the good knight what makes you think you're the good knight what makes you think you're you're meant to slay the, the fucking dragon you might actually be the dragon you know what i mean what absolute nutcases man like i just can't believe it spirituality okay okay whatever you say sir whatever you say